In this tutorial, we're going to go back to the basics and learn how to create a C++ project using the Eclipse Integrated Development Environment, or rather, the Eclipse IDE. So to get started, let's fire up our, our Eclipse here, and we'll do this starting from a new workspace. So you'll see here it asks you which, when you first fire up Eclipse, it asks you what workspace to put your project in, or put all your information in. So we're just going to go ahead and hit OK, and we'll let Eclipse load for a second or two. Now, this is just the splash screen. It'll take about a second, maybe two or three, uh, to load up. And then it'll take you to the following screen here. This is the welcome page. And now, granted, this is an older version of Eclipse, but um, pretty much any version you download, it's going to have a similar look and feel to this, where it asks you if you want to do an overview, tutorials, etc., etc. What we're going to do is come over here to the workbench. Now, let's go ahead and blow this guy up. You'll see a few panels here. Um, this giant empty gray one is where you'll be editing code. You'll see tasks, outline, project explorer. So what we want to do is come up here. You see this drop down right here in the upper left corner. You can go new project. You can also go into this project explorer, right click, new project. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And it brings you up to this panel here. Let's click the C slash C++ project dropdown, and we'll click C++ project. Now we'll see here it asks you, what do you want to name your project? We're going to start off with Hello World, the quintessential uh, beginner project. Now, a couple of things to note. It says, do you want to use the default location? For this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and hit OK with that. The only thing we're going to change here is this tool chain from cross GCC to the Linux GCC. Let's go ahead and hit OK on that, and we can hit Finish. Now the first thing you'll notice is it comes up with this pop-up that says, this kind of project is associated with the C slash C++ perspective. Do you want to open this perspective now? And what that's saying is it'll change up where the location of some of these windows. So we're going to click Remember My Decision and Yes. And now what we see is our project over here in the Project Explorer, so that remains the same. We also have some new tabs down here, Problems, Tasks, Console, and Properties. And then we have some tabs over here as well. Let's go ahead and click the drop down. And what we can do here is right click on this Hello World project, hit New, and let's do a new file. Okay, We're just going to call this main.cpp, and then let's go ahead and hit Finish. So here, let's go ahead and edit our source code. And I'm just going to write a uh, comment that says, hello world, world first program project. There we go. Now we're going to pound include iOS stream. And then we're going to go ahead and write our uh, main function, int main. And what we want to do is just hit standard see out hello world and then inline return zero so what you'll see here is already we have this big ugly underline with red on standard see out and standard inline now what's going on here is eclipse is about to run its um, indexer which will then look at what's included and then resolve these errors so we'll give that a second to run. And go ahead and hit Control S to save it. And now you see it kicks off the indexer down here. And here in a second, it'll resolve these issues and it'll be highlighted as valid commands or valid input. Now, while we wait for that, um, let's go over here to our project in the Project Explorer. Oh, see, there we go. So let's right click on this project and go down to Properties. Now, you'll see under this, it defaults to showing you the resource. It'll tell you the path, what it is, where it's located. And we can come down here, and I also want to look at C++ General. You can set your paths and symbols. And you'll see under here, it includes all your basic libraries. If you need to include external ones, you can do it there. Come down to C++ Build, and what we want to look at is Settings. Now, the 
first thing we want to do is look at our build artifact. You'll see here it defaults to an executable. You also have options for a shared library and a static library. In another video, I show you how to create a shared library um, with a few different options, but for this one, let's do just a straight executable. And let's see. Because it's an executable, let's change our artifact extension to exe so that we know what it is. And if you wanted to, you can put it in a different location from the project. We can just do dot dot slash, dot dot slash, whatever. But we'll put it right there. So hit apply and OK. Now we want to compile, we're ready to compile our program. So let's right click on this project and hit build project. You'll see under the console tab, it shows you what the, um, what the command line arguments would be that it's, it's doing. It's uh, invoking G++. Here's all your options that it's used. Um, and it'll give you some output there. If you have any issues, so let's create our own, let's create a bug and have some bad syntax. So we'll save it. Let's right click, build it. And you'll see on the console, it'll throw out some errors here. Ian is not a member of standard. Oh, well, you're right. Let's go ahead and remove that white space. Save it again. We can recompile. And there we go. So if we come over, jump over to the command line, let's cd into the area in which we put our executable. So if you noticed, the default path was where the workspace was. So let's go workspace 2. And you'll see there's our project and this dot metadata directory. The dot metadata directory contains all your workspace settings. So if you think of the background colors, um, spaces versus tabs, and like what your tab alignment is, all those types of settings are stored in your dot metadata. We want to jump over to the hello world. Now let's take a look around here. So if we do an LL, we'll see a couple of things. We'll see this dot C project, this debug folder, our source file, and this dot project. The .c project and .project files contain all your project specific settings. So if we want to include external libraries, like let's say if we want to use Boost or we want to use Qt or something, that information will get stored in the .project and .c project files. Additionally, we told it where we wanted it to, what we wanted to compile, which is an executable, and also where we wanted to put it, what the extension was, that's all contained in your .project and .c project file. Now if we go into this debug directory, do an LL here, we'll see all the compilation products, um, the .d, the .o, make files, etc., etc. And we also see our executable, so let's go ahead and give this a run. And we've got our hello world. So that's the simplest case of how to create a C++ project using the Eclipse IDE. However, there are a couple of issues with this, mainly it puts the executable in a rather, to me it seems like a rather junky area. It also sort of conflates your project specific settings with your personalized workspace settings. So now you have something in your personal work area, whereas if you're working on a team or in a collaborative environment, you'll probably want to keep your workspace settings in one location and all your project information somewhere else. So in the following video, we're going to look at how you um, can create a project, but you put it on like a separate server or put it in a local, in a uh, centralized area for better collaboration.